Welcome back everyone to another episode of Dynasty Tactics. In this episode we're going to continue on from what we were doing last episode. We're going to be trying to move up north and capture some provinces. Sassar's going to move some armies there but he's not actually going to attack. We're going to expand our territory. We've taken Yongan which is a very historically important town, the city. And we've got Fei Yi, we've got uh, somebody I missed, I can't remember his name. Well, we're just going to move our way up. Now, we don't have many much, many tons left, I don't think. We've occupied Jiang Yang. We're pushing our way into the west. We've got Jin Juan, who we did decimated last time. Importantly, we've got Man Chong. Man Chong was an important one to get. He's a very good officer. And if we can prevent Salsa from getting him, he's going to be a good asset for us. Occupy duty, we do. Again, just pushing ourselves into the west, establishing our presence. There's not much else we can do, though. So, with that, we're on our final turn, so let's move up and take Jiang Yang with no resistance, oddly enough, from Cao Cao. We didn't fight Cao Cao at all during this entire scenario, I don't think. And we're just a little bit shy of complete domination over the West, of course, Liu Zhang's there. So, Sun Tzu is wounded and refusing to not be in battle. Yes, please do. Please just concentrate. Please leave the battle. I don't even use you, Sensei. I don't even use you when I fight. Sensei's biggest problem is that he was way too hot headed. Way too hot headed, needing to be invested in the battle itself. This all could have been avoided since then. Eh? And we finally have Sun Xuan and Sun Li, or Sun Xiang Zhang, as she's known in the Dynasty Warriors series. So, as well as fighting Salsa, we've also got some internal uprisings, which basically means, yeah, two people have taken over two of our towns. Which is not okay. We have four towns. Four turns to attack and wipe these guys out. So we're gonna just organize our armies and set them out. We're gonna surround the one that's directly next to our capital. How embarrassing would it be if he had, he had taken my capital? If I had moved like for some reason, if I had moved all my armies away from my capital and then he just moved in and took it and I lost, that would be so embarrassing. Apologies for my phone. Just So not much going on in this battle to be honest, there is not much at all that we need to do. It's essentially just one enemy officer plus a bunch of footmen and infantrymen and crap like that. Zhugong doesn't really have much in the way of officers, he has nothing essentially, it's just him. So this is not going to be a very difficult fight at all. We're just going to wipe them out, you know. I'm not even using my main force again, I think this is the same force. I've got Ding Feng here, I've got Wang Ping. Not even using my main force to do this fight. Good old Kanzi as well. And where's he gonna go? He's gonna come straight at me because that's all the AI does is come straight at you. And we think, well, yeah, let's go and then go on Ping. Guan Ping doesn't have very good tactics at this stage in the game. Guan Ping really needs to be leveled up. Before you can really use them effectively, then you've got Shimok, who is basically a complete archery unit. He's got good fire arrows, though. And I can use that volley and fire arrow from any of these squares, which is very useful. Now, if I put um, one ping to ambush, that won't work. I don't think that will work. Oh no, wait, he is. He's in a grass, isn't he? If, I, if he's in a grass, it'll work quite well. So that was a nice little tactical combo, not bad. 
Now let's move up. We're not going to bother with trying to capture because there's no one to capture, essentially. So we're just going to go up and decimate. Yang Zhu is here. He's got really good tactics. As you can see, he has Surround and Pincer, both of which are great. Okay, we've got Hong Zhong here. He's in range to do a lot of damage. Alright. Hang down, where can you go? You could go here. See, I really don't like the fact these infantry and footmen units, I just don't like them. I think they're a bit of a waste. Uh, it's essentially really frustrating because we don't get them if we are um, short of enemy officers, we don't get them. It's very frustrating uh, to know that the enemy only has one officer and then they get boosted up by like, stupid units that do nothing and are essentially just there to add extra padding onto the battle. If the enemy has one officer, they should just have one officer, that's just how it should be. Not doing a lot of damage here, not even a thousand with that fire arrow. Fire arrow is really weak, I feel. It's only very effective if you get um, multiple people at the same time with it. Let's bring Shimok in. Oh, I can get all three of them and push them in. To. Mm, yeah, that could, this could work, maybe. Do two fire arrows. Okay, so that didn't do as much damage as I was hoping. But we're gonna be fine. This is gonna be absolutely fine. Do a little bit of a volley here. There's these battles, the ones without any enemy officers to capture, aren't the most exciting ones. You just go through the motions essentially. Starting to wish that I just cut this battle out because it really isn't that important. But I guess it's a story related battle, so I've got to show it off. Okay, so this battle is just progressing along as we expected it to. Just trying to get, you know what, I'm just going to use this battle as a way to level up my officers. So try to use as much tactics as we can, try to get them as much deeds. The enemy forces aren't even, they're not even doing any damage, this is just a pathetic showing from them essentially. I mean, they didn't really think they were going to succeed in a uprising right next to my capital with all of my forces there. Mm. 
Yang Zhu is going to hit a great pincer. This is going to do so much damage. This is actually going to be a good one. 2,455. That's not too bad. And then we've got an aid here as well. Leave it to me. Oh, another 2,000 odd. Great. And another aid as well. This is going fantastic. And another aid. I will help you. Ten thousand deaths. What a waste. Ten thousand on these stupid infantry units. What a waste. Alright, but now that that's all done, we can take the fight straight to Zhu Gong. Who's gonna sneak behind us and attack our rear to try and do some damage. I mean, he's got to be a little bit confident, at least he's got to have some kind of... He's got to, at least he's optimistic, you know? Okay, so now I'm just trying to figure out what I'm gonna do next. What is the best way to go from here on in? I'm next in. He's a number two, and then we've got a three over there. Zhukong isn't moving until he's not... He's last to move. He's turn nine, so his morale is pretty uh, pretty low, in all fairness. So, I pretty much got this. Hong Zhong, who has no tactics at all left remaining. Just no tactics whatsoever. But he can still bow. Ping. Let's move up, let's just attack and go for it. Kanzi. Trusty Kanzi. Kanzi is actually a decent unit. He's not too bad for it. He's a good he's a decent strategist. There's worse strategists out there than Kanzi, in all fairness. Yangju is one of my preferred strategists, though so he's actually quite he's a unit that you don't think would be really good, but he's He's actually quite useful. I think I've used Yang Zhu in all three of my campaigns in this game. That should finish Zhu Gong off. He shouldn't have much left in him after this. Yep, that, there you go, he's done. This battle is done. And we're done. Finally. That battle was boring, um, basically entirely because of how little enemy forces there were. But that's it for this episode, we've finished off that resistance, and now join us next time where we'll be- Oh, you sneaky little devil. Taking one of my cities. <laughs> See you guys next time. Enjoy.